This is Rock and Roll English. Real people, real English. Here's your host, Martin Johnson. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English. Episode number 295, baby. Oh yeah. If you're thinking I'm speaking a bit quietly, that's because both of the R&R babies are in bed and I don't want to wake them up. Anyway, in today's episode, I speak to the Hell Razor. Yes, he is back. And we speak about health because it's an important thing, isn't it? And I've not been feeling so well and I am only capable of making podcasts about things in my life. In other news, I recorded a video to this podcast. In reality, I record a video to every podcast. I just don't do anything with the video. But today I have decided to upload it to YouTube. Okay, so if you go to YouTube and type Rock and Roll English, you will find the Rock and Roll English channel. Please subscribe and then you can watch the video. Remember to subscribe. I don't know why. I just hear other people on other podcasts say that. OK, so go there, watch the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. So the conversation with the Hellraiser does continue in the members area again. As I always say, it's just easier for me to record one long conversation and put the second half of the conversation, the more personal side of the conversation in the members area. So speaking of the members area, if you are not in the Rock and Roll English family membership area yet, join us to have access to over 1000 exclusive true R&R episodes with transcripts and podcasts that are not safe for the public. So that's why they are in the family area. You also get to build a personal relationship with me and other members from all around the world. So if you're interested, stop this podcast now and click the link in the description to this podcast to learn more. I will talk to you all again at the end. Happy listening. Hellraiser, how are you today? Very good, Mark. And you? Always fantastic, Hellraiser. Always fantastic. Even more fantastic. Oh, sorry, I just burped. <laughs> I, I'm, I really apologise for that. I didn't. Know, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I've ruined the, the intro. These things just happen, don't they? Well, it's, yeah, it's the natural. <laughs> so, um, I think the expression is better out than in. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, I had planned a fantastic intro, but. What's better than a burp, hey? I don't know. <laughs> I'm happy with it. Who wouldn't be, Hellraiser? Who wouldn't be? Are you going to stop moving your microphone as well now? I'm just readjusting. I'm trying to get it so that the, the air doesn't come out again uh, and interrupt right. the podcast with another burp. Okay, so yeah, if you could not burp or move the microphone... Just try to stay still. Just move the muscles in your mouth it's, and maybe like tongue. And that's all we need for the podcast. OK, it's two thumbs high from me. Roger. <laughs> OK, excellent. Two thumbs. My favorite. We spoke. I spoke with Boom Boom about this, about fingers being raised. You don't want the middle one raised, do you? Always the thumb. Well, it depends. The thumb is the one. It depends what the message is. <laughs> <laughs> Valid point, valid point. Anyway, Hareza, how do we usually start the show? Uh, reviews. Yes, do you think we have a review? I think so. I think so. I hope so. Yes, we have a real beauty today, a Facebook oh, review. Lovely. And it's from Andre Strilstisiv, who I know as Andrew. Okay, every time I've spoken to him, <laughs> he says, call me Andrew. and Helpful for you. <laughs> very helpful very helpful um, and it says 
Oh my goodness, let me tell you, Rock and Roll English is quite the crew, with Martin Johnston leading the way, and co-hosts that make every day a riot of laughs and learning galore, from the Hellraiser to Clarification Charlie and more. Dan the man is quite the dude. Boom Boom Cannon always lifts the mood. Substitute Sabrina steps in with grace. Corporal Coma keeps us in place. PTTJ makes us sweat and strive. And Retro Robs keeps the nostalgia alive. These language learners are having a blast. Improving skills that will forever last. Thanks to the hilarious and talented team at Rock and Roll English for filling their dream. So if you want to learn while laughing out loud, join the gang and you'll be proud of the progress you'll make in every way with Rock and Roll English leading the way. Oh my God. Andre, (laughs) Andrew, you have blown my mind. Andre, are we calling him now? (laughs) That is amazing. That is amazing. I'm almost embarrassed to make a podcast now. Just because stop. It's not, not, it's not going to be as good as that. That's the end of the episode. No. Uh, uh, fant- I mean, I, I, I'm actually a bit, a bit emotional, a bit in tears. As am I, Hellraiser. As am I. So thank you so much for that, Andrew. That was absolutely beautiful. Two thumbs high, baby. <laughs> two thumbs from both of us. So four, four thumbs, thumbs in total. <laughs> two plus two. You do the maths, okay? Um, So on to today's show, Hellraiser, okay? Indeed, I'm ready. Now, I thought we could just have a bit of a chat today, okay, about a very important topic, which is health, okay? Because I have not been feeling so well recently, and it really makes you realise how important health is, okay? Just in case you didn't know... Mm. Mm. (laughs) Health is important. And just to give you an idea of how sick I was, I decided on on like day three, I thought I'm feeling a bit better now. Mm -hmm. So I got in the car. I went to Tesco's, the big supermarket, in case anyone's interested. In England, we do actually differentiate, don't we, between big Tesco and little Tesco's. So I went to the big Tesco's. Okay. And... Then I thought, right, like you with your burp earlier, I thought I need to do a fart. Oh, no. I thought I'll be okay. And oh, then <laughs> tried and then I thought we have an emergency here. I I have shit my pants. <laughs> Was this in, in the big Tesco's or in, in your car? In big Tesco's. So oh, very quickly no. had to leave big tesco's without buying the things that mrs r and r had told me to buy came back and said look i'm really sorry i've sh- i've shit myself to the checkout people <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I said and then they they said it on the tannoy you know when they talk to the whole supermarket they said uh, excuse me we have an emergency martin johnston Once has shut himself in aisle five <laughs> clean up in aisle five <laughs> We got a live one. Uh, no, actually, Mrs. R and R mentioned to me. Obviously, with two young children, we do have lots of nappies at home. Nappies, obviously, the things that children wear, mm-hmm. and asked me if I needed any. She said, "You can get adult ones. Would you like some nappies?" And I said, "I, I think I'll be okay." Um, so I avoided it. But so I thought we could just talk about health in general. Okay, Hellraiser. So what about you? Are you a healthy person? Oh, top of the game. Yeah. yeah. Shamanic. <laughs> you you did actually mention you are 69 days without drinking alcohol, Hellraiser. Is that right? Absolutely wild. Yeah, 69, baby. Uh, that's an, an Austin Powers voice. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, 69, because, yeah, certainly in the past, if I thought of one person that probably didn't care so much about his health, (laughs) it was you. And I always think, demonstrated by the fact that you volunteered to try drugs for 
medical purposes we're not just talking recreational things here <laughs> but i always think i never thought i would know anyone personally that that would do that because i think if you volunteer to take <laughs> these medical drugs which haven't well they haven't been tested they are being tested on you i think you really have to care almost nothing about your health I think that the thing was for me, I cared more about my impact on medical science and <laughs> the wider human race than my own uh, body and health. Um, just for the for the listeners' benefit, I was it wasn't it wasn't a great time. I spent ten days locked in a secure unit of a medical facility in the north of London with twenty other let's call them inmates, uh, varying degrees of madness. <laughs> Conversation must have been pretty good in that place. I, I kind of imagine this like big brother kind of thing. If they, they should maybe put cameras in there just to see what happens <laughs> in these places. <laughs> it, it was a bit, it was a bit weird. Um, I wouldn't do it again. Uh, mm. But you know, but, I've contributed to the to the human race in ways that probably I, people like yourself haven't. Yeah, very noble of you, well, Hellraiser. Your words, there. not mine. Your words. <laughs> to like sacrificing yourself, kind of like Jesus did for pretty much the rest of humanity. If you want to put it that way, I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to say no. I, I definitely not, because probably you had no money at the time. And I would imagine, I've, I've never asked you, but I would imagine they pay people quite a lot of money to do this because I don't think many people would volunteer to do that without You'd be surprised. a healthy financial reward. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Uh, there wasn't many people who I'd say were of sound mind in there. <laughs> right. None of us stayed okay. in touch. Okay, well, well, that's good because, well, it's nice that you're looking after your health now, Hellraiser. Very much the opposite to me because I don't think I've ever felt less healthy than I do at the moment with getting absolutely zero sleep, eating absolute shit. Because when you, if you don't sleep, you, you kind of want sh to eat shit don't you? Yeah. So even literally just before this, I, I bought a lint chocolate bar, you know, like the really high class chocolate, I think. Where is it? Oh, yeah. Treating yourself Swiss. Oh, yeah. Swiss. Yeah. yeah. You deserve it. Yeah. Well, I, I went to Little Tesco's yesterday. And didn't shit yourself. Luckily, <laughs> no, I just saved the shits for the big Tesco's because yeah. I want to make more of an impact yeah. there. For the, for the Little Tesco, it's like, yeah, who cares? I'm not even going to piss myself here. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, and I was there, you know, and I thought I'm going to push the boat out here and go for some lint chocolate. Mm. And they're, they're quite big. And literally just before this podcast, I thought I'll have like two blocks. Ended up eating six blocks because, uh, again, you don't get wow. any sleep and you think you just think, fuck it. I don't give a fuck. You are living on the edge, man. <laughs> 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 exactly um, and i actually so i've developed a bit of a i think it's known as dad bod like a dad like belly let's say ba since baby r and r number one was born i have to say and the other day i was just flicking through my phone and some old pictures and saw a picture of me from about five years ago and I thought, God, look how much like slimmer I was there. But normally people look at those pictures and think, oh, I looked great. And then I kind of looked and thought, no, I did. I did look like I was a bit sick there because I was so skinny. <laughs> so it didn't look good then either, but just look worse now. <laughs> did you take out that yeah. life insurance in the end? <laughs> no, still, still haven't taken it out. And if they listen to this podcast, God knows how much money they're going to ask me for oh, your premium to, premium's to, going to be through the roof <laughs> to ensure to ensure my body um but yeah at that period during that period 
when I was really skinny, I, I will always remember seeing a friend, let's say, that I hadn't seen for a long time. And I said, oh, hi, you're okay. I hadn't seen him, remember, for at least 15 years. And he said, yeah, are you okay? And I said, yeah. <laughs> and he said, because you look like you're sick. You look like you have cancer or something. <laughs> I mean, what can you say to that? Sorry to disappoint you, but I don't have cancer. I mean, Why would you say it? That's, I, that's quite a bold thing exactly. to say. To, I mean, imagine if you said, yeah, I have. Exactly. Exactly. Just don't mention that no. at all. Have you been tested, Just... though? Are you? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> but like I, that, for confidence, yeah, I think maybe good. that was before Mrs. R&R, like in... So, you know, haven't got a girlfriend. Most of my friends were kind of like getting married and things. Mm. I'm thinking, am I, is this going to happen? And then you see someone and they say, you look terminally ill. It's not good for your confidence, Hellraiser. It's not something you're going to put on your Tinder profile either, is it? <laughs> what do friends say <laughs> that I look terminally ill? Exactly. Yeah. So, um... I, I mean, I had quite an unhealthy phase. I didn't. When I was running pubs, I I ballooned. I was like a <laughs> I was like a German German blimp. You like were you were pretty fat. Yeah. You. <laughs> I mean, I was thinking of saying that in a nicer way, but let's just let's just not beat around the bush here and go straight to the point. Was, you were pretty. fat. I was carrying some some spare timber. <laughs> around the way oh yes <laughs> lots of spare timber i th i thought you had just kind of given up taking drugs at that point because you know <laughs> alcohol has more impact <laughs> <laughs> i remember seeing you thinking something doesn't look right here but yeah so we we all go through these phases hellraiser hopefully i will you know come out of the other the other end of it as we say well we're all rooting for you I don't think that okay. you're terminally ill at the moment. <laughs> you don't look well, obviously. I mean, yeah, I never do. I never do. But yeah, not terminally ill is nah. is a bonus. You look like you're going to so... make it. <laughs> make it to 40 at least. Only, well, less than two years to go. So. Shit, less than four. Fingers... Wow. Me too. Less than two. Less My than birthday's two. coming up if you're interested. <laughs> Okay, yeah, really, really interested. I'll, I'll send you a card, maybe with a picture of both of us on there. It would be nice, actually. I don't think I've ever received a birthday present from you now I think about it. Yeah, I don't think I've received many from you many. either. It's not like you're many. you're buying me loads of birthday presents and then I, I'm not returning the favour, is it? I think I've, I have bought you more presents than you bought me. I think that the balance is out. I, I'm pretty sure we've never bought... <laughs> I've never bought you a present and you've never bought me. Although I do remember, so it'll be 20 years this year, your 18th birthday, Hellraiser, going out for that. Remember that night? Not all of it. We we went to a different town, which was, I don't know, probably 20 kilometres from where we grew up. And I remember then coming back to school on the Monday and I remember thinking like, God, these people here they don't know what the world's like we've been out we've we went we've traveled 20 kilometers and went to a, a yeah. nightclub there people there are just so different people there are just so much more yeah, chill man yeah so so chill exactly we were pioneers <laughs> real pioneers yeah. i think I, that did change me to go into that different town <laughs> i think it altered the course well we we then went a bit further, didn't we? I you know I went to Italy. You went to like Uganda. Just we just maintained that, didn't we? Exactly. And if everyone just remembers the first journey, every journey begins with one step, and that step might be to Basildon <laughs> or Rome. Wow! Since you have stopped drinking alcohol, Hellraiser, you have become such a philosopher. Every journey begins with one step. There you go. Like You're it. welcome. You can write that down. <laughs> I like it a lot. Um, so here is an interesting question for you, Hellraiser. I, I, I know the answer to this, but maybe we can explore it a bit. Speaking of illness, not being well, have you ever called in sick at work? So 
<laughs> well, let's say as well, let's change it to have you ever pull, pulled a sickie? So when you pull a sickie, it's when you're not actually sick, but you phone up and tell work, look, I'm really sorry, I'm not coming in today because I don't feel very well. I mean, how many times have you done that, Hellraiser? I mean, that used to be more of my job than my actual job, was finding <laughs> reasons to say that I couldn't come into work. That was that was quite a job because that would happen probably, I would say, if I had four shifts a week, maybe 50% of those I wouldn't go to. <laughs> well, and it does get difficult to think of excuses constantly, exactly. doesn't it? So it's like a job in itself. It's not easy. Relatives can only die once. <laughs> that's the annoying thing isn't it it is annoying yeah you just have to make up you have a really extended family there was one time that i didn't call in sick and um i just turned up turned up for my next shift and uh yeah and i just turned up for my shift after not coming in and they said where were you and i said well i was sick and they said but why didn't you call in they said well, i was too sick to get to the phone it was pretty bad <laughs> as well mobile phones did exist at this point as well oh, sure it wasn't much. a smartphone you couldn't send a picture it was on charge you <laughs> it was on charge <laughs> i just couldn't get to the phone it was too much but what do you say to someone who says that you can't i mean <laughs> well the the worst and i must admit i i have used this before as well is they you phone up and you think i've, I've got nothing for an excuse here and they say oh, i can't come to work today what's the problem personal problems <laughs> because no, no one can ask you anything if you say personal problems it's like oh but that's also wow. that's also not a lie because you know <laughs> we did have a lot of personal problems Okay, so we are stopping the conversation there. As I said, don't forget to click the link in the description to this podcast to learn more about the Rock and Roll English family membership area where this conversation takes a much more personal turn, let's say, obviously talking about health and some things that have happened to me recently, let's say. Anyway, let's have a look at some of the vocabulary from today. So at the beginning, the Hellraiser burped and I said, better out than in. That's what people say. We also had a lovely verb to differentiate between big Tesco's and little Tesco's to make a difference. And also the tannoy. The tannoy in the supermarket is when they say, could somebody please clean aisle five because someone spilled some milk or something like that. That's the tannoy. I describe the Hellraiser as being very noble. So when you are noble, let's say you show some good qualities and the Hellraiser spoke how I treated myself to some Swiss chocolate. So when you treat yourself, you do something good, something pleasurable for you. And I said, yeah, I decided to push the boat out with that Swiss chocolate. And the Hellraiser said, wow, you are living life on the edge, living dangerously, eating six blocks of chocolate. And because of that and other things, I said, I now have a dad bod so a dad body a little bit of a belly let's say the hellraiser mentioned how he ballooned how he got bigger when he was working in a pub and i said yeah let's not beat around the bush let's not waste time here you were fat um, and he said yeah he was carrying some spare timber so timber extra weight let's say and then he was saying how hopefully Obviously, I will get better. And he said, hopefully you will come out of the other end of it. Better days are coming. We're all rooting for you. So we all want you to do well. And the last thing was, have you ever pulled a sickie? Remember, when you're actually not sick, but you kind of 
tell your employer that you are. Anyway, remember, all of the vocabulary is on the website, rockandrollenglish.com. Click podcast episodes, go to the latest episode. Remember to check out the YouTube video and also the r r English family, where you will find the link in the description to this podcast. Thanks everyone for listening. I will talk to you very soon. But in the meantime, just keep on rocking. Thanks so much for listening to Rock and Roll English. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit rockandrollenglish.com and facebook.com slash rockandrollenglish. We'll catch you next time.